cast shadows. How do you paint cast shadows? And particularly the colour of cast shadows. If the object is a different colour, is the cast shadow a different colour? A cast shadow belongs to the surface it is cast onto, not the object that's casting it. And I'll come back to that idea a couple of times while I'm painting these studies here, okay? So I'm going to switch over to the easel camera. That should be good. So the palette is here. I've got a couple of little studies that I'm thinking about doing up here. They're all, they're all basically cubes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you cubes in different lighting situations with different colored um, grounds. By the ground, I mean the surface that the cube is sitting on. You know, this is, I always think of the background and this is the ground. So the first thing I'm going to paint is the background. The background doesn't really matter too much, okay? It's mostly about the value. Okay, so I'm going to mix a colour for the ground. Now let's say a low chroma ground and the hue is going to be like a greenish blue. You could be forgiven for thinking that the shadows, the cast shadows here would also be a low chroma green and they would pretty much. Um, so if I mixed a lower value version of this green, you know, and I could put that in and it would probably be about okay. It would probably work out all right, except that um, in very low chroma colors like this, the ground is very low chroma, very near to neutral. You notice a lot more the influence of the ambient light. So actually, ambient light in rooms, it really depends on the room that you, um, that you paint in. But if you paint in a normal room that has furniture in it and stuff like that, and you know, you will find, I have always found in all the rooms that I've painted in that the, there's an ambient light, which is, the ambient light in the room will generally be slightly orange. So what I've got here is, it's very low chroma still. It's mostly raw umber, which is kind of a yellow. It's a yellow orange in hue with a little bit of transparent red oxide to set, give it a bit more chroma and send it a bit more orange. And the actual color of the cast shadows will be somewhere between these. And the reason for that is, this is so low chroma that you will notice the effect of the ambient light in the room coming into the shadow. So this shadow here would actually be slightly towards orange. So you can kind of feel already that there must be an object here. That's going to be a bit too dark. We'll go a little bit lighter for the front plate. So the light plane at the top of the cube will have a little bit, the light in this study, if you imagine the light in this study is coming down like this, be slightly lighter, the top will be slightly lighter, just a little bit. And the shadow side is actually going to be darker. It's, it's very dark, the shadow side. It's going to be darker than the cast shadow. Interesting thing about cast shadows is that the edge of the shadow is always harder, closer, the closer it is to the object that casts it. So this cast shadow will be harder here and it will get softer as it moves further away. And to soften things quite often, I will take a very soft brush like this is a, this is a Winsor & Newton Scepter Gold. If you've ever been on one of my workshops, you'll be familiar with these and me talking about those and you can soften gradually towards the back. What about if we change the color of the ground here to be something else? So I'll put the background in first, same as before.
This time actually I'm going to paint the cube in straight away. I wouldn't normally do it this way around, but this might be interesting because we can see everything except the cast shadow this way around. So this shadow here will be a slightly lower value than this one because the local is lower value. This color here is lower value than that one. And the cast shadow, so the cast shadow is going to be a little bit darker. And also there's ambient room light. Okay. And it's being cast onto a slightly orange surface. So it's going to be way higher chroma than this one here. So you've got an orange surface and then a little bit of the influence of orange light coming into there as well at the same time. So I'm going to quickly mix up shadow color. It's going to be pretty dark so I'm going to start with raw umber. I'm going to bring in some transparent red oxide which is going to give it some chroma. So this color here is a very low value orange. It has a little bit more chroma so there's going to be more chroma in the cast shadow than there is obviously in the cube itself because the cube is neutral. my biggest struggles with colour, you know, before I kind of managed to get at least some something of a handle on it, was was the colour of shadows. I found them so difficult to judge. Um, and I'm always, f I'm fond of saying that painting is, um, it's a combination of what you see and what you know. Um, because it's very easy to be tricked. It's easy to trick yourself. Um, and knowing things like the color of a cast shadow belongs to the object that it's cast onto can save you sometimes from making perceptual mistakes because our visual systems are really not designed for this. They're not designed for painting at all. The cast shadow belongs to the surface it is cast onto but it is also influenced by any light. So this is any other light sources. So this is ambient light in the room because this is so low chroma. If this was a higher chroma green or a high chroma blue, you wouldn't really notice this so much. I would be painting this a low value green or a low value blue. It's only because this is low chroma that you really notice that difference. So here you get a bit of added chroma. It has a little bit extra chroma because it's, it's the colour that it would ordinarily be, a darker version of this, with some a little bit of added ambient light as well. Okay. The other situation that you have, apart from ambient light, that can throw light into a shadow is reflected light. So this little layout here is for me to show you something very specific. So I'm going to start it the same way. And what I think for fun this time, I'll paint the shadows first and then fill in the rest of the object and hopefully that the objects, and that should kind of, the shadows probably won't make any sense until I've filled in the, the rest of the cubes, the two cubes, and you can see what local color they are. So it could be kind of fun to do it this way. Let's see if it works out. So this cast shadow here is really interesting, this one here, because the back of it, this bit back here, is going to be the same as this one. Okay, just the very back of the cast shadow. But here it's going to be influenced some, by something because this cube here, the front, this plane of this cube here, is going to reflect into this shadow a little bit. It's going to reflect some chroma um, and some hue because this is going to be quite a high chroma cube. So the color that I'm going to put in here is going to be the green. And I'm going to send it, give it a little bit more chroma. And I'm going to send it a little bit towards orange.
So in terms of hue, just thinking about hue now. So ordinarily it would have had a little bit of orange in it. It would have been a really, it would have been in hue terms, it would have been somewhere around here, but really, really low chroma, almost gray. And it's gone a little bit around here. It's almost going like from orange, it's going a little bit towards a yellow orange, almost towards a green. And the reason it's being pulled this way is because of the color of this. Now, this cube here, I'm going to paint the shadow area on here of it first, because that's also a cast shadow. Okay. So here on this part of this cube, we have a cast shadow. So this is the cast shadow from this cube onto the surface of that cube there. And I'm going to mix raw umber with a bit of yellow. which makes a kind of almost like a greenish kind of color. And it's going to have a hard edge on the bottom because that's the edge of the form and a soft edge towards the top. You do absolutely have to know the color of the cube because this is the point where this is why I'm painting these first. I'm painting these cast shadows first because this has been sent slightly from orange towards green um, and this is a very low value yellow because that's the color of this cube so this side of it here the shadow side won't be quite as low value as that cast shadow because it's there's some light coming into it but it's basically yellow the effect of this yellow cube is that this is a cast shadow but it doesn't belong to this surface or to this one it belongs to the object it's cast onto so it's a low value yellow we've got here and there's bounce light coming from this plane into this shadow here, which is sending that slightly yellow. And the reason I did them first was so you could kind of guess, you know, the only way that that can happen is if the cube is yellow. Um, if this cube had been, um, say, a high chrome orange, then these shadows would be slightly different colors. And on this plane here, we will also have a little bit of reflected light. So it's going to be the dark color that I mixed before, a neutral. But in these cubes, there's nothing coming into the shadow side of them. In this one, there is. So it's going to be that, but with an influence of the yellow. Not a huge amount. They're very subtle, these effects. Um, but there will be light from the yellow cube, the light side of the yellow cube on the left, reflecting into the neutral here, which is why I chose a grey cube. In this study here, there's a huge amount going on in the light. So over here, this cast shadow belongs to this object, so it's a low value version of the local color. Over here, we've got some bounce light from this part of the, um, the light plane of this cube into there, into this face. This cast shadow here belongs to this area, except there's some ambient light coming into it, so it's gone slightly orange. This one is the slightly orange with some yellow going into it as well from this cube here. So it's actually a really, really complicated study. You know, there's a, it, you would think that it would be pretty simple. You've, only, you've got two cubes, right? All you've got to think about is two cubes. But it's not simple at all. 
it's actually pretty complex. Um, because of all the light that's bouncing around in there and the various influences of the colors. But it's very, very easy to overdo these things. You need to be very careful and, 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 uh, and not overstate them. Mm -hmm.